Hi, second grade. I hope you're having a great day, and I'm so glad you could join me in today's art lesson. My name is Miss Emmeline Lydon, and I'm a teaching artist in the PACE program in Lafayette, Louisiana. Today we are studying science, and we are studying chemical change. We have the definition behind me, along with some clues as to how to identify when it has gone through a chemical change versus a physical change. Chemical change occurs when a substance combines with another to form a new substance and it is irreversible, meaning we cannot undo it. The clues we can look for are color change, makes an odor, change of temperature, forms a gas or forms a solid. It is a new substance. I want to focus on the brilliant explosions of fireworks because fireworks are a chemical change. Have you ever thought about what fireworks are made of? Have you ever thought how there are colors in fireworks? There are different metal mixtures that go into the fireworks and when it explodes, it creates a new color. I want to pretend for one second if we can do some brilliant explosions with our body. What if we go really, really small and we burst? Can you do that with me? You can use just your hands if you happen to be at your desk or if you're close to a neighbor. Really, really small and make an explosion. Now, these explosions create lines of motion in the sky because fireworks don't just go mm, they explode and fall. So do that with your hands if you would like to. Let them explode and fall or burst and burst and burst and burst. And we're going to draw some fireworks today with these colors using lines of motion. Let's dive in. We are focusing on chemical changes today. We're going to write the definition on this piece of paper. If you have a piece of paper and pencil and would like to write with me, we are going to define chemical change. Chemical changes occur when a substance combines with another to form a new substance. It is important to understand that it forms a new substance. Unlike physical change, which is a visible change in matter without forming a different kind of matter, a chemical change occurs when a substance combines with another to form a new substance, okay? And this is also called something that is irreversible. We cannot take back what we made when a chemical change occurs. It is irreversible. Let's talk for a second about how to create motion with lines. Lines can go up, down, and around. Have you ever seen lines made from motion? What lines show the motion of a flag waving in the air? What lines show motion of cars going down the road? Artists made these pictures. What motions do the lines show? Can you feel the motions? Why? Welcome to the art table. The supplies you need today are a piece of paper for your backdrop. We're gonna glue our artwork to a solid piece of paper. Then you need a black piece of paper to um, show a difference between foreground and background. Then we need a white piece of paper because this piece of paper we're going to draw on and we are going to draw our awesome lines that show motion and in today's art project, the motion is going to be the brilliant exploding factor of fireworks in a night sky. The other supplies that you will need are some crayons. We're going to be drawing with white crayon on black paper. 
and then we're going to need colors of the sunset. When the sun is setting, you get an array of reds and golden colors as well as blue colors. And these colors happen before the sun is all the way down, which means it's not all the way dark. We still get brilliant colors when the sun is setting. So get some of those colors. And we're also going to layer our art project with different supplies. So we're going to do the background with a wash of crayons. And then we're going to draw our lines that show motion with markers. So the, the markers are going to be layered on top. Now I chose these colors to draw my fireworks because fireworks come in a variety of colors. And these colors are going to bounce off of the page and be a nice contrast to the crayons in the background. We will also need a glue stick and a pair of scissors. All right, let's get started. You might have seen a cityscape. What is a cityscape? That is when there are buildings side by side built tall and strong together and it's the opposite of a landscape. A cityscape comes from when buildings make a big line across the sky and a big picture into the horizon where buildings are side by side. So today's lesson we are going to start by drawing a cityscape. Oftentimes the cityscape will involve buildings that are rectangular or square and sometimes triangular on top. So the way you do that is give yourself about two inches on the bottom because we want to show a foreground and a background. So this is going to be the height of our first building. And we're going to go to the right and up. And we're pretending this is a big skyscraper. And then remember how sometimes we have houses with a roof that's a triangle? So we're just pretending here. We're pretending that all these buildings have been built side by side. And what would they look like if they were all side by side? So have some fun being creative and draw a cityscape where these pictures are rectangular and one more maybe triangle top. These are just the roof tops of what we would see in a big city. Now you might not live in a big city so you can use your imagination or you can look at a picture of a city from a far away perspective. Now you take your paper and turn it and we're going to practice cutting. All of a sudden these lines look completely different. Now when we cut our cityscape we want to take our scissors and guide them along the white line. And that's why we wanted each of these buildings to have big shapes so that we could cut along the lines. So you want to guide where you drew your white and we are going to go along the top of the cityscape only and we're going to pretend that we are taking the foreground away from this piece of paper and we're going to leave what would be considered the background. We are not going to use the background today. So slide and guide, slowly take the scissors along the line until the entire cityscape is completed. If you wanted to, you could also cut rectangles and triangles and you could create this same shape with independent shapes. 
we are creating a rooftop by keeping all of the paper connected. But if you find this is too challenging and you don't have anyone who can help you, then you can cut some rectangles and some squares and some triangles and glue them to the page to create a city. Okay, that is really the most challenging part of today's lesson and we are going to put this aside. And the fun thing about this is it looks like a city. We are now gonna use a piece of white paper to create our sunset. And the white paper is a little bit smaller than the blue paper. So the first thing we need to check is the size of our cityscape and does it go across the white paper? It does, but it is the same size as the blue paper. So I think this is gonna work just fine because we can glue the black paper to the blue paper. All right, so put this aside and we have turned our page landscape. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take colors of the sunset and we're just going to wash the crayons back and forth and create a sunset. Now, when you get to the edge, if you want to go onto the background paper, that's okay. But if you don't wanna overlap that, you stop at the edge and try not to make it touch the blue paper. So we are going to glue the paper down. So take your white paper and your glue stick and we want to go around the edges of the paper so that the paper will stay put when we start to color. And when you have all of your supplies right next to you, they're easy to reach. They're easy to reach and to work with. If you don't have a glue stick, see if you can borrow some glue from somebody else. Now we want this paper to be in the center of our page. And if it's not perfect, that's okay. But you want to just try to look at all the borders before you press it flat. And here I go, I'm going to press it flat. Now I think this is really fun to do a wash of color where we just guide the crayons along the page. And the way we're going to do that is we want the color to reach all the way down so that when we put our cityscape on top of it, it will reach below the horizon of the buildings. Okay? So let's start with blue. And we're going to do a nice blue sky. You can use a light blue or a dark blue. And we're going to wash along the edge. And when I get to the edge, I'm trying not to touch the blue paper. But if you touch the background paper a little bit, that's okay. Great work. Then we're gonna take a red because there's a lot of red still in the sky when the sun is setting. And we are going to wash the red and overlap the blue just a little bit. And we have overlapped the two colors and it looks kind of like purple where they're overlapped. Okay, I'm gonna scoot this up a little. Then we are going to take an orange or red orange and we are going to wash over the red. So some is on top and some isn't. And then we are going to complete the sky with some yellow. The yellow could be lights from lights in the street. Street lights could be lights reflecting out of the buildings, but there is a little bit of light in the sky, what the yellow is representing. Now at the end, we're gonna put this down, but first, I want to draw our lines that are gonna create motion of the brilliant fireworks that go in the sky. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about the chemistry of fireworks. Fireworks are a chemical change 
And when they explode in the sky, they create different lines. The next time you see fireworks, I really want you to observe and explore what shapes are being made in the sky and what things look like. Let's start with the lines of motion when you have a central spot and the fireworks are exploding out from that central spot. Okay, so we're not going to draw the circle, but we could do a little dot if we need to remind ourselves where the lines are going to explode out from. Okay, so take a marker, and I'm doing this fast, and notice how when I press my marker down, it makes a thicker line, and when I let go, it makes a thin little point. And you're just going to work to go all the way out from the center and onto the blue page is totally fine because this is an explosion of our fireworks. Now we do see the fireworks have more than one color, so let's pick a second color. In this case, I'm going to choose a yellow to make it get very bright, bright and gold and we're going out from the center. And these lines, hopefully, are showing you a an explosion of that firework. And sometimes, do we see little sparkles on the end when they fizzle? You'll want to look at a firework explosion when it happens again. So I'm just doing a little squiggle, little dot line here to show when it kind of fizzles out and it has an explosion at the end and then we can make thin lines of motion coming out from the center because often a firework has a very bright burst of color so work for a second on your big exploding fireworks and all the color now, sometimes fireworks have a shape that is a little bit more like it curves down when it comes back to the ground. So we're going to do a line of motion that starts in the center as well, but it's going to curve around. So we're doing one curvy line, just like that. So it has a slight curve, a little pinwheel line like that. Can you create? A firework that looks like that. And let's guide along where these curved shapes are met with some yellow. Nice exploding of yellow. And we can play with any color really. We can do what we feel we want to do as artists. So what if we went zzz? Sometimes fireworks make noise, right? When was the last time you saw fireworks? It's usually for a big celebration. And next time you see fireworks, you might look at it more like an artist this time, or you might look at it more like a scientist where you say, how does that happen? Now you know that fireworks are a chemical reaction. So let's make one where it bursts straight up into the sky like that. And then it has little bursts that come out of the top. So we're going to circle this with little lines going into a circle. And the next time you see one that does this, you'll say, I learned how to draw that. And it is OK that we're covering the other fireworks, because often they layer on top, right? So we're going to make a circle of short little lines. And these lines are going to build around so the circle is growing like nice explosion of those fireworks and one more and I'm going on to the background page and it shows a little bit more of a textured look and overlapping look when we go into the background and what if we shoot some rays of purple along there good now, what happens when it makes an explosion where it comes out from the center instead of long lines that are going to zoop as they fall? Let's do one where it just looks like 
a nice burst in the center and it's going to have a little bit of texture around it. So just like the blue one as well, we're start eight, we're going to burst from the center and then we're going to grow from there. Okay? And guide your marker around like a spiral but we're doing lines of motion coming out from the center. We're keeping the true center and we're circling around that center with our little, little marks, our little lines of motion. Good, and you can make this as big as you want to. And you're just imagining what that would look like in the sky if it went into the night sky. Awesome job. And let's make a little bit of layer. So where you have some small orange marks, try to put some small red marks. And we're just going to go around and this gives it a little bit more dimension, a little bit more layering of light. Awesome. Okay, what if we do one last one because I'm having so much fun and we've got a big explosion of yellow in the middle and then we have the lines coming out and they're going to curve around like that and then pick a color that has a little bit more contrast like this one. Okay, and you're guiding around. You're going next to the yellows. Good. And then let's do a little burst on the ends of this as if it was falling. Once it comes out, it falls. You know, when they burst and they fall. And they are changing. And it's falling kind of like scattering of light into the city scape. It is easier to see fireworks when it is nighttime and it is falling, falling, falling. Awesome job. Okay, the next step is to glue our city onto the fireworks. How fun is that? Look at that. Good work. Okay, so I'm going to move this out of the way for a second and I'm going to take the glue stick, flip it over, and I'm going to guide my glue stick along the page. And I want it to glue down well because we're going to add a little bit of detail, like windows of light in the buildings and windows that um, go all the way up the buildings. So you want to make sure that everything is glued down well. Okay, this black paper is representing a silhouette of the buildings because the light is behind it. We are focusing all the light on the background and the black paper is like a silhouette of the foreground. Now once again don't glue it until you match the corners and you might need some help for this. Match the corners and go along the bottom and then press, press, press with your hands and this makes it kind of come to life. Look at that. How cool is that? We've talked about the chemical change of fireworks, but can you feel it? Can you feel that brilliant explosion of the fireworks now with your beautiful work? And then the last tip would be if you wanted to draw some of the windows. A cool thing about living in the city is these windows show how tall and how many floors are in a building. And when we think about construction and building design, can you imagine creating a building that is that tall? So you can go along and you can make details of patterns. This one kind of, this one kind of looks like shingles on a roof, little curve shapes. 
And then this one, you could have a tall window on top and little windows below it. So I just want you to take some time, if you have extra time, and create some detail on the front of your buildings, just like that. So have fun with it and work on different shapes for how tall your building might be. You can play around with it if you just want to do a shadow like that. Little windows, long windows, tall windows. It's a brilliant explosion in the sky. And this one I'm going to do curved shingles that are overlapping. Nice work. We are almost there. Draw some more windows of detail and imagine all of these people watching the brilliant fireworks that are exploding in the night sky. When you look at fireworks, you see dazzling red, white, blue, yellow, and orange trickle down in all directions. The explosion of fireworks is an example of chemical change. During a chemical change, substances are changed into different substances, making a new substance and they are irreversible. All right, have fun decorating your last building. It is really fun, I think, to draw with a white crayon on a black background. And I would like you to put your name somewhere because we can see this drawing. So I'm going to go Miss Emmeline. Have you worked on your cursive yet? Good job, second grade. I hope you are proud of your art project and that you have signed it with your fabulous name on the bottom with your white crayon. And next time you see fireworks, think about how they explode and how that's a chemical change. Think about where the colors come from and think about how the lines in the night sky create motion and that motion makes a whole experience for everybody who's watching it from a city or from the countryside looking at the night sky. I'm so glad you joined me today. Once again, my name is Miss Emmeline and as always, keep making art.